We for me, I mean, your regular Edmonds. programming to bring you this special AM 1450 live sports broadcast. No score on that board, Mike. Feels like a prize fight, the beginning of a heavyweight yeah. prize fight where you sort of, each opponent sort of feels out the weaknesses of the other one. Yeah, each of them getting in a couple of heavy body shots along the way here. We'll see who softens up first. Wait a minute. He's got a man open. He hits him. 20 yard, 30 yard, still on his feet. 40, and he will score. All the way down. Call that a 65 yard touchdown for the Katakton Cougars. Wow, and in a sudden turn of events in the momentum of this game, on a long bomb, perfectly dropped right in the bucket from uh, Zachary Scott. Man, he hit him in drive right over top of the door. Right into his outstretched arm. And it, then it was just a foot race. Muscleman, shotgun formation, takes a snap, looks right. Oh, backfield, runs, runs the draw. There's nobody around him. He's got room. He's still on his feet down the 20. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Leonore Lancer on a 50-yard run from the line of scrimmage. Quarterback draw by Nathaniel Muscleman. They go to their power NFL pro set. They hand off to the deep back straight ahead. Touchdown, Walkersville Lions. Low man wins on that one, Dave. Good blocking from the backfield and a nice surge from the offensive line. Well, that was an impressive drive that started out all the way back on the 27-yard line for Walkersville. And they just shoved that ball down Tuxin's throat. Mm, let's get it. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Middletown High School, home of the Knights. And we've made it all the way to the 10th and final regular game of the high school football season here in Frederick County. My name is Michael Betteridge. I'll be doing your play-by-play. Joined in the press box with Coach Rick Little. Rick, how's it look out there? Beautiful. And again, we talked about this all season. What a great weather we've had all year long yeah. for high school football. Very little rain. Very little elements have ever entered the system as far as determining the outcome of the right. games or not. That's right. It's a good point. I and here we that. go, week 10, Middletown, Walkersville. It doesn't get any better than that in Frederick County. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to thank today's game sponsors for making this possible. Brownies Auto Care, David Salon, Frederick County Bank. Gettysburg Auto Auction, Med One Pharmacy, and Play It Again Sports. Thanks for sponsoring today's Middletown Knights, Walkersville Lions high school football game. And I was able to catch up earlier with Coach DeLauder, the first-year Middletown Knights coach, and uh, interviewed him. And I'm going to play that interview for you now. Uh, here we go. Coach Colin DeLauder of the Middletown Knights. We're here with uh, Coach DeLauder, Middletown Knights. Uh, Coach, how are the guys doing? Are you ready? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. We had a great week of practice. We're just excited for 7 o'clock tomorrow night. How do you get the guys prepared for a game like this? It's a, it, it's a huge game psychologically. I mean, really, let's be honest, the 2A West is arguably the, probably the best division in the entire oh, yeah. state of Maryland. How do, you, how do you prepare them? Uh, well, you know, we talked about this uh, beginning of the season, the fact that we're in a tough, tough region, all right, and kind of the fact of get over it because we got one of the toughest schedules we're ever, we're ever going to be dealt. So every game has, has been a dogfight, and, you know, we've just been preparing every game from here or from the beginning of the season till now because they've all been dogfights, and we had to, you know, lay it on the line for every game so far. So you really just can't look back what's in front of your plate. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I mean, it's all about all about what week you're on, right? You focus on that week, and uh, this week it's Walkersville and ready to get after it. What do you think the key is uh, for the Knights to beat the Walkersville Lions? Uh, just like every week, we got to show up, and uh, everybody's got to do their job, and we got to got to play all out for all four quarters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to stop those big guys up the middle, ISO right, ISO left? Oh, man, I guess we'll see about that tomorrow night, but yeah, I have confidence in my players, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, how are you doing physically? 
Uh, physically, we're doing well. Um, you know, this this point in the year, it's uh, it's tough because that's when everybody starts, you know, getting banged up a little bit. Uh, but we're holding up pretty well. We got a couple seniors. Uh, we had a couple seniors there out with uh, season season ending injuries, and uh, you know that, that's always tough to deal with uh, from a whole team perspective. Because I mean, here you grow up playing with those guys, so it's tough for the guys to accept that. But um, you know, it's it's going well. Other than that, we're staying pretty healthy, which is good, and mm -hmm. uh, just ready for tomorrow night. What what do you think the key to that game is going to be? Uh, like I said, just playing all out for all four quarters and playing together as a team and doing your job and getting it done. You know, I took a look at the differentials between the uh, same the same teams you played. Mm -hmm. There's only a six point differential oh, between yeah. the two, uh, okay. so we're expecting a pretty close game. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. I mean, it's Milltown Walksville. It's been a rivalry since uh, you know Frederick County football really became a thing, and back in the late '70s. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it seems like every November we're having this conversation. <laughs> yep, that's right. That's right. Sometimes so, twice. So you played for uh, Middletown? Yes, I did. Yep, I played uh, 2010 and 2011. Well, those are some good teams. Yes, yep, yep. They were pretty good. So you've seen Raisin Stadium from the inside out? Oh, yeah, yep. I uh, played there in 2010 and 11. And then uh, 2009, we uh, we lost in the state semifinals. So, yeah, you know, it's kind of culminating just step by step we finally made it there well we hope you make it to navy yeah. academy this year so uh, good luck to you coach thank you i appreciate it all right that was coach colin delauder here uh in an interview we got in with him yesterday after practice uh coach rick little was able to catch up with coach joe paulus uh and uh ask him a few questions about tonight's game we'd like to play that interview for, interview for you right now we're here with Coach Polis, Walkersville High School, as they prepare for Friday night's matchup against Middletown. It's a great rivalry. It stretches all the way back to when the schools first open. You know, and it's also a rivalry within the groups of kids. You know, the same groups of kids have been playing against these guys since they were little. So, it's, everybody's been excited all week. We've had a great re week of preparation, and we're ready to go. I was going to ask you about that week. It played a rough game Friday night. Oakdale, quality football team. How did they bounce back? Well, I think I think we bounced back really well. I think playing Middletown helped that and helped get our focus and attention right away on Monday. And uh, you know we've had a great week of, of practice, and I think the guys are focused and ready to go. Great. Talk about the winning streak a little bit. We're up to 23 games now. Do you think the guys feel any pressure? I really don't. We've never talked about it one time all year. That's I mean, great. And all we do is, you know, we always talk about we don't look too far forward and we don't look back. We just stay focused on the week at hand. And, you know, the, the coaches really go by that. And we're just so focused on the game plan for that week. And all, we don't really look far ahead. And I think it's helped the team. And honestly, I haven't heard one kid talk about a winning streak all season. Well, you may not look ahead, but a lot of us do. And, of course, regional playoffs right around the corner. And I know you're saying the boys don't, but we're all watching the points. Right. We're all watching what Damascus does, Oakdale does. Middletown, this is... This is kind of their do-or-die game. They could easily drop out of the playoffs with a loss here tonight. Right, absolutely. And so we know that they're going to be super ready to go. And, you know, we've got to have to match their intensity early. Yeah, we, you know, the, the points are what they are. Damascus is one ahead of us, and we, we need this game desperately and that some things will go our way, and we can have the overall number one seed. Very good. Just talk about the entire season. Anything Anything that happened with your squad, any other squads in the county that kind of caught you off guard by surprise? Um, I don't know if anything's caught us off guard. I mean, we've just been kind of grinding it out and focusing on, you know, studying film and getting ready for each opponent. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a great season. The guys have been great. Uh, the Friday nights have been unbelievable. And, it, you know, they've put in a lot of work to this. And we're just trying to enjoy it and, you know, keep it going as long as we can. And one of the big things going into Week 10 is, is health, the health of the squad. You seem to be in pretty good shape. Yes, we're, we're, we're very healthy. We've been very fortunate, you know, the last few years. And we just keep uh, working and, you know, hoping for the best and, you know, trying to keep everybody healthy and doing our best through the week to keep everybody healthy. All right, Coach, thanks for taking the time and continued success to you and your squad. All right, thank you very much. All right, that was uh, Coach Joe Paulus, head coach of the Walkersville Lions, in an interview with Coach Rick Little, uh, who is here with us tonight doing color analysis. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking a lot about this complicated playoff scene, scenario, especially for the 2A West, and uh, we went and talked to one of the experts, uh, uh, Sheldon Sheeler, who is the uh, – founder of Mar MarylandPrepFootball.com. We talked to him, I interviewed him today about the situation uh, with these teams and how this could all shake out. Here's the interview with him.
Good afternoon and welcome to the pregame show for today's high school football game. We're here on the phone with Sheldon Shaler. Sheldon is uh, the founder of the MarylandPrepFootball.com site. Sheldon, welcome to our broadcast. Oh, happy to be here. Sheldon, tell us a little bit about your, your website, Maryland Prep Football. What is it uh, all about? Um, it's really, uh, I, you know, I bounced around from a number of uh, larger media organizations, and, and, and they were kind enough to host um, my information. But eventually I decided I just needed it to be in one area um, so I didn't have to worry about any media, media um, changes. And it's basically a site that's kind of dedicated to the records and history for high school football in Maryland. Um, you know, that's where we keep sort of the updated records list, um, a lot of the state history in terms of the state rankings, all state teams, mm -hmm. and just uh, trying to put high school football in a little bit of a historical context. What's your background? How did you get involved in uh, specifically football? Uh, well, when I got out of I, – I was the stat keeper at my high school, and that happened to be Frederick High. Mm -hmm. and we made a run to the state final, and uh, that prompted my interest in – Wow, when was when was the last time Frederick ever did this, or when you know how prevalent is this in mm -hmm. in, in Frederick County, and it just sort of grew from there. I just I kind of enjoyed the um, you know the the landscape so much, and as I became a professional journalist, my focus has always been in the world of high school sports, and you know, football's football's king, especially in the fall, and um, you know I started right away covering high school football, and and here I am 30 years later, wow. still hanging around in the same uh, space. And you're just not you're not just doing this in the digital online world. You're also uh, one of the managers over at the Frederick Indoor Sports Center, correct? That, that is correct. Yes, I'm I'm the program director here, and that job kind of uh, entails uh, a lot of hands-on um, with mostly the soccer and lacrosse communities. I'm pretty much a football soccer guy. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I run the Ravens football uh, seven on seven tournament with Vince Ahern in the summer. And I do the high school football in the fall, and then I do soccer year-round. So that's what I do. And we're here with Sheldon Shaler, and he is uh, the founder of the MarylandPrepFootball.com site. Sheldon, have you taken a look at the 2A West? What, what is your opinion on this division in Maryland football? Well, we, we knew when the new classifications came out, you know, with teams like Seneca and Damascus and Oakdale moving down to a two-way that already included the likes of Walkersville and Middletown, who, who've kind of had the lock on the two-way state title for the better part of the last half uh, decade. Mm -hmm. um, it basically shifted the focus from 3A West to 2A West as the state's most difficult and dominating region. Clearly, the results this year have shown that because it is very likely we're going to have an 8-2 and two team not make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. you know, it's very popular. I shouldn't say likely, but it's certainly possible. An eight and two team it is possible. A couple of seven and three teams um, won't even be close to the playoffs in this region. Whereas, you know, by contrast, you've got other regions where you know five and five and four and five teams are still alive. Now, I know you can't speak to the the rationale that the MPSSAA uses for doing this, but did, are they, you know, were they at all aware of what kind of a division they were creating in the 2A West when they made these alignments? It's based on enrollment, correct? It, it is based on enrollment and geography. So for starters, um, enrollment determines the classification. Geography determines the region. And while we look at that in, in a football sense and go, oh, my God, all of the state's powers are right here in, in 2A West, the reality of it is that might not be true for other sports. Mm. So okay. set the alignment. You know, this applies to softball and, and, and baseball as well as basketball, boys and girls, and football. You know what I mean? Like, That's a great point, yes. So, so while we're looking at this just through the football lens and you're throwing your hands up in the air, you know, 2A West – in, in the eyes of some, in maybe uh, softball, for example, or something like that, might be considered a very weak region. Right. Makes sense. Good point. Excellent point. Yeah. So now let's take a look specifically at tonight's game with Walkersville at Middletown and the 2A West ramifications of this game. Who's got the most at stake in this game? Well, Middletown has the most at stake because Walkersville's in win or lose. Mm -hmm. Middletown really needs to win this to get in. If they don't win this game, they need a, a fair amount of help in order to get in. You can't really count on help. <laughs> not when you're controlling your own destiny. You can't you can't rely on help. You know, we already know not only is Walkersville in, we also pretty much are reasonably comfortable 
Yeah, well, with the loss, they could drop to number three, but, you know, Walkersville's in. Now, you know, obviously, Walkersville's also riding a 23-game win streak. They certainly don't want that to disappear anytime soon. There's obviously a lot on the line, but Middletown, this is more of a, a playoff game for Middletown, whereas Walkersville, you know, they could still lose and, and still move on. So am I right in saying, and, and, and just so our listeners know, in case they don't, uh, the top four teams in each of the classifications will go to the playoff seedings. That's uh, the, the 2A West and the 3A West and the 1A West in Frederick County. Uh, am I right in saying that there are six teams in out of the ten teams in Frederick County that could make the playoff? Once again, our thanks to uh, Sheldon Sheeler, yep. the uh, MarylandPrepFootball.com, for giving us the uh, little clearer understanding of this complex uh, Maryland high school playoff football system. And uh, uh, we'll play. We will replay that interview again at halftime. We had to cut a little short there because we're, we're coming up to game time, so we'll play it in its entirety at the beginning of half for you. Um, just want to uh, let you know that the, the teams are at midfield right now. Uh, the captains are out there with the uh, officials for the coin toss. And we have, we're getting the signal right now. Middletown has deferred. Middletown has won the toss and declined. And they will kick off to Walkersville. Right to left on your radio dial, Walkersville will be down at the western end of the field with the wind at their back on their first series of offense here tonight. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, this 2A West, as we said, the toughest football. These teams are number 7, number 13, and number 23 teams in the 2A West in the state of Maryland. Yes, all all log jammed at the top. You got undefeated teams. You got one loss, two losses, three losses. You don't make the playoffs in this region. So it's it's obvious, Rick, that uh, this game means so much more to Middletown tonight because they're one and done. Yeah, if they lose, they're probably out of the playoff hunt. You're exactly right, Michael. And they come in. Uh, Middletown comes in off a pretty solid victory last week over Laurel, uh, coached by Colin Delotter. West. We'll step aside for a short break and be right back. Serving our community for over 50 years with quality service at a fair price, Brownies Auto Repair employs only ASE certified technicians. Brownies is one of only 33 shops in the state of Maryland designated as an ASE Blue Seal of Excellence Repair Facility. They want to help you maintain your vehicle in a manner that keeps it trouble-free and fun to drive. Stop by today. That's Brownies Auto Repair located on Frederick Street in Walkersville, a proud sponsor of Walkersville High School Athletics. Athletics. If you own a business, you know that work doesn't begin and end with the hours posted on your door. Hi, this is Business Development Officer Mary Berry, and at Frederick County Bank, we understand that too. That's why we make business banking easy and accessible, anytime, anywhere. From BuzzPoint Merchant Reward and Loyalty to online banking, remote deposit capture to business courier service, Frederick County Bank, Frederick's true community bank, is open for business, anytime, anywhere. Contact me at 301-620-1400 and online at fcbmd.com. FDIC. I find whatever you're best with. We'll make do. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here live at Middletown High School, home of the Knights, for the 10th high school football game of the season. The Knights are hosting the undefeated, the only team in Frederick County, undefeated Walkersville Lions here 9-0, coming in here tonight. As I mentioned earlier, Middletown with a 7-2 record, ranked 33rd in the state of Maryland, and uh, coached by Colin DeLotter. They've uh, they were state champs in the 11, 12, and 13, so they had a three-year reign that was unquestionable. And the folks from the other side of the county would like to think Walkersville was the second best team in the state of Maryland a number of their years. The bad thing is, they're both in the same 2A West region. The ball is teed up on the 40-yard line by the Knights, and we're ready to go. This game is about to get underway. There is the run-up and the kickoff. 
And it's a flat mid kick all the way down to the five yard line, taken at the four, 10, 15, 20, out to the 25, tackled and brought down on the 26 yard line where the Lions will have it first and 10. Quarterback Billy Gann will bring them out and see what they can get going here on this first drive. Beautiful kick there by Middletown. Well covered. Jacob Wetzel called it about the five yard line, a little to his left, up to the 26 yard line where Walkersville starts their drive. Walkersville breaks the huddle in their white-on-white -white uniforms, white jerseys, white pants, blue helmets with the blue lettering, and they go in the uh, I formation behind Gant. Gant under center with two receivers split wide. Hand off to the deep back. Isolation dive play right off tackle. Not much there, Rick. Iso left, tie. Ty Littleton on the carry. Well defended by Middletown. Looks like he came out in a six-man front there to start with. Hear that? Or 4-4 four, four and just rolled the outside linebackers up right on the line of scrimmage. The eight so, in the box. They're definitely going to have to try to stop this run right off the bat because uh, uh, Walkersville just is so strong on the inside running game. And they like to run the ball about 95% of the time. Speaking of which, here they come. Wing left. Eye formation. Wing in motion. Turn and hand off to the deep back. Straight ahead. Sticks his nose down. Breaks through the line of scrimmage the first level into the second level. And he gets about three, four yards on the carry. Leading defender for Middletown, Roland Hockenberry, stepped up from linebacker spot, stopped that for a short game. Looks like we got about third and four for Walkersville at the 32-yard uh, line. Yes, Hockenberry has got the, he's got uh, 37 tackles on the year. Leads the Middletown Knights team. See here if we Walkersville go. doesn't do a little play action here on this. Pro set, handoff to the right back, off tackle, left side, straight ahead. He didn't get it. He's short about a yard or two, so that's going to bring up fourth and short with the ball out on the 32-yard line now. So uh, they're probably going to punt it away, wouldn't you think? Yep, yep. Fourth and three from deep. They're going to punt this away, try to flip the field position a little bit. So Walkersville jams it up the middle, and Middletown stops it. Yep. Middletown... Definitely look like they're going to try to make Walkersville pass the football. Oh, There's a nice punt. punt. Beautiful punt. Got the wind behind it. Oh, all the way down to the 10-yard line, and it rolls all the way into the end zone for the touchback. My goodness, how far was that? That was an 80-yard punt. From the from the line of scrimmage, it's 67 yards, plus his distance of about 12 behind. Christian Policelli got that up in the air. The wind blew it. Actually, it was too good a punt. Bounced all the way into the end zone, so Middletown's out on the 20. Right over the heads of the receivers that were deep on the 20. Middletown will have the ball on the 20-yard line, their first possession <coughs> of this first half. Looks like we'll have a little breeze here left to right, Michael. Yes, Middletown goes spread, pistol formation, hand off to the lone back. He goes off right tackle, Ooh. and whoa, he is smacked hard. He got a few yards, but boy, he paid the price on that one. 34, Dowry on the carry off the right side. Jacob Wetzel from his safety position and Christian Policelli from middle linebacker out to make a quick stop. Gain of th about three on the, the carry there, Michael. Second beautiful, beautiful night here at Middletown Stadium. The uh, full moon is out there over, over the field. The wind is blowing left to right coming out of the west. Uh, the crowds are... All the stands are just packed with the colors and the blue and gold on one side and orange and black on the other. Here we go. Again, pro set. Hand off to the lone back, and he's smacked in the backfield for a three-yard loss. Again, Dowry on the carry. That time through the line of scrimmage, defensive tackle Camden Krenzer on the stop. Lost a two on the play. Brings up 39 for Middletown. At their 20-yard line. Looks like he's, yeah, all the way back to the original line of scrimmage, actually. It's, well, the uh, ball's just on the other just side. Just on the other side of the, of the stripe, yeah. Here they come out now. Same formation. Three receivers split wide. Pistol backfield. Poffenberger, straight drop. Looking to his right. Got a man. Hooks up oh. and he drops it. Hit him right in the numbers and he dropped it. So three and out for both of these offenses as the defenses are strong and showing that they can stop the run and the pass. Yeah, yeah, Middletown there dropped right into that hook zone area. Ball on target, just could not bring it in. He wouldn't have gotten it anyway, even if he'd have He looked like he was a yard or two shy yeah. of the mark if he goes down immediately. Yeah, that's what you got to teach those receivers to get beyond that first down marker. All right, so Middletown's going to punt from deep in their own territory. 
Stand around on the 10-yard line. He gets a good snap, gets a decent punt away. It tumbles end over end. Takes a good middle town roll over the 50-yard stripe and all the way down to the 37-yard line where it's down by the black and orange there. And Lions will have their second possession of this first quarter. And chance to get something going here. Yep. So three and out for both offenses. Yep. And not surprisingly, Middletown passed once. Walkersville didn't pass at all in their selection of three plays. So we'll see if Coach Poles dials up that run again or tries to put a little air in the ball here against this defensive front by Middletown. Here comes Gann out line scrimmage. Trips left. Blown back in the backfield. Looks like a passing formation. He hands off to the deep back, fakes a handoff, pulls it, throws a man on a quick out. Beautiful catch. Falling backwards in the air, catch, and he brings it down for an eight-yard gain. Billy Gant with a little bit roll left. Josh Polis uses all six foot five of his frame up in the air, catches it with his hands, gain of eight on the play. Second and two, Walkersville at the 45-yard line. Polis is leading all receivers with 32 receptions and 461 yards this season for Walkersville. Yeah. Josh is clearly the number one receiver for Billy Gant. He looks for him almost every pass play. Two receivers split wide, eye formation behind Gant, down under center, straight ahead. Bounces it outside, stiff arms a man, breaks the tackle, still on his feet. First down yardage, gain of seven on the carry. Off tackle, run by Jacob Wetzel, even with nine men in the box. Walkersville able to bounce that outside for about a seven-yard gain. Jacob Wetzel takes the ball just into Middletown territory. First first down of the game for either of these teams as they cross just over the midfield stripe. And in the Middletown territory, as Coach Little just mentioned, they come out with the same formation. Two receivers split wide. Gant looks over the defense. The safeties and backs are all cheating up in the box, and sure enough, they catch him behind the line of scrimmage, spin him around, and he forward progress takes him back to the original line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Right off the edge, defensive player for Middletown. Slip by Christian Palacelli's block. Loss, loss of a little bit, about they, a foot or two. Well, they, they blitzed up the middle, and then they brought the safeties on a run blitz, and so it was, that was eight men coming in the middle of the box yeah. because they, they saw that ISO all the way yeah. now. Middletown runs a lot of their 52 invert. Mm-hmm. There they brought the, both the inverts, the safeties, up towards the line of scrimmage That's like line. They did again, and he, he bounced this one outside. This time There's Wetzel nobody out there. Loose. Hits a foot race to the 30, 25, 20, and drilled out of bounds all the way down to the 10 yard line. That's what happens when you get caught in the box. Yep. Brought them all up again. Jacob bounced outside the right side. Mark Evich on the touchdown saving tackle. Not before Jacob gets all the way down to the Middletown 10 yard line. First and goal for the Lions. Lions have it first and goal just inside the 10 yard line. The ball's right on the 10 yard line. Coach and likes to run fullback traps in this position. And that's exactly what they do. Little, Sticks his nose in there and falls ahead for about two yards. Little ISO left, actually. Tie Littleton from this tailback position. They move the ball back, so it's a gain of one. Second and goal at the nine of Middletown. So the ball's right on the nine-yard line as they shuttle in a couple of players to the huddle here for Walkersville. Yeah. Looks like they bring in their heavy package yep. to the backfield. They're just going to – it's gut check time, Good. and they're just going to run right at them and say, stop us. Oh, they go pitch outside, and there's a flag. Little little motion going motion. on. Yeah, yeah. that's – so they uh, they got everybody thinking inside dive, and they pitched it outside, but somebody jumped. Looked like an offensive lineman, just a little bit of a quick jump on there. Five-yard penalty brings it back to the 14-yard line. Second down, Walkersville. All right. Getting interesting here. Check tight end here. Motion across the formation, handoff oh to the deep back is fake. He rolls out and wants to pass. Got a man Billy wide open. Touchdown in the end zone. Walkersville scores. Billy Gant rolls out left. Josh Polis from his tight end position slips behind the pass defense of Middletown. Touchdown, Walkersville. Beautifully 
designed play as everybody was on the side. But instead, he rolled out, faked the handoff, rolled out, and hit a wide open man standing in the back of the end zone. Yep, Noah Sadler for the extra point. Out of the Billy Gant hold. Oh, looks like there's a little motion there again. Jumping. Flags come out. It looks like offsides on Middletown. We'll see if Coach still decides to kick it or take advantage of the yard and a half game. <laughs> Let's see what they're doing now. There, here's the signal. They're just going to re-kick it. No, I don't know. Yeah, they they blew the whistle before the kick. Right, the that kick, I got. The kick went out of the uh, stadium, so they're retrieving the ball. Then they're going oh, to <laughs> mark off a yard and a half and reset the play. All right. So they wouldn't go for the uh, two-point conversion now that they're so much closer. They're just going to kick the, the PAT. He's just get the point on the board. All right, here we go. The snap to set, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And that's it. Walkersville Lions have jumped out on, to a 7 and nothing lead here in the first quarter on a Billy Gant pass into the end zone. Six and a half minutes gone in the first quarter. Walkersville, second possession. And like we talked about, through the air. All right, we'll be right back after this commercial break. We're listening to AM 1450. And this is your source for the best high school football in the region. This is Dave Johnson, radio voice of the Washington Wizards. I want to tell you about an exciting sports store in Frederick. Play It Again Sports. That's right, Play It Again Sports is located on Bucky's Town Pike. If you're like me and you're tired of spending big bucks on sports equipment your kids will outgrow, head on down to Play It Again Sports and sell your old gear and then buy new or used gear. Whether it's lacrosse, football, hockey, basketball, soccer, or ski and snowboarding, Play It Again Sports has all your new and used sporting good needs. You can walk out with new equipment, money in your pocket, or both. Unbelievable. That's Play It Again Sports and Frederick for whatever sport you play. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Walkersville Lions have teed it up. There's the kick deep all the way down to the five-yard line, taken out to the 10, 15, 20, and wham! He is smacked hard and brought down at the 19-yard line. Middletown have, will have it first and 10 at their own 19. So Middletown still having uh, unfavorable field position in this game. Yeah. Good kick coverage there. Sean Kale, number 35 for Walkersville, came down, broke through the blocks, and laid it on him. He did. Empty backfield. Trips right. Five receivers in that pattern. It hit a quick r wide receiver screen, but it goes for nowhere. Not much there. Just too many guys over in that zone. Well, it looked like quick out. Try a little bit of Trying screen to set up action. A screen, yeah. little screen yeah. action to number 44. Clink out who lined up at the wing spot there. Walkersville, good coverage and good convergence on the ball. No gain for Middletown. Second and ten. All right, Middletown breaks the huddle. They come out again. They go trips left this time. Two receivers split wide. So that's five receivers. Four again on this side, Michael. Empty backfield. Looking for the slant. It's not there. He hits a quick check down. Caught for a gain of about three on the reception. Poffenberger pass to Jordan Bunjani. Gain of two on the play. Brings up third and eight for Middletown. So Again, third. Walkersville quick to cover. Yeah. Well, that was the second. He was reading. The first receiver was a slant on the read, and he checked down to the slot. Yep. Empty backfield again. Here they go. Same formation with the trips left. Straight drop. Looking to his left. Wants to pass. Rolls out. Scrambles. He's got some room. Got some green turf. He's run for the first down and out of bounds into the Walkersville bench. Good running, solid running by Poffenberger yep. to pick up that first first down of the game for the Knights. Yep, yep. Walkersville lost contain. Poffenberger rolled out to his right, sprinting to the sidelines, first down Middletown at the 30-yard line. So he went off schedule on that one and picked up the first down. Yep. 
Well, and that that tends to keep those linebackers honest, with that, doesn't with it? With that empty backfield, Middletown typically only rushes three. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Walkersville rushes three, lost contain, and linebackers were back in coverage, couldn't get up quick enough. Sticking with that trips formation, empty backfield. Quick out again, wide receiver screen. He drops the ball, no pass. It's an incomplete pass. So it'll bring up second and ten as they're they're going to the well a couple times with that one. Well, it looks like this this they're spreading Walker to out. This short passing game is kind of like the running game, but they're trying to get it out quick, get a little bit of space, get a couple blocks on the edge, and get away from the middle linebackers of Walkersville. Ty Gleason and Christian Policelli, two of the best in the county. Not a bad game plan. All right, here we go. He fakes a quick out, and then he rolls to his right. Got some running room, wants to run it, and runs it out of bounds, but he only picks up a couple on the scramble there. Yep. Again, leaks out to the right side. This time, Walkersville rolled up quickly. Aaron Yonke knocks him out of bounds after... A gain of two brings up 38 Middletown at the 32-yard line. So they've got, yeah, I'll call it third and eight. And, and they were able to convert on the last one, but it was on a, a busted play, essentially. So oh, let's see what they can cool do this plays, time. Players making plays. Walkersville needs to keep him in the pocket. One receiver in the backfield, pistol formation, high oh. snap over his head. He brings it down, pulls the ball down, hits the man on the slant, but he's just shy of the marker by about a foot or two. He didn't get first down yards, but, man, what a play by Poffenberger. That ball was over his head, and he went up like a like a baseball player, tipped it, and caught it. Tipped it to himself, caught it, gathered himself, and in a nice pass, gain of eight on the play, a, a yard shy of the first down. All right, here we go. They're going for it on the first and one. No, they've got a punter back to punt it. They've got the punt unit on now. Here we go. Punting into the wind. He gets a pretty good one away. It's taking a fair catch at the 34-yard line where the Lions will take over for their third possession on offense. If it's as windy down on the field as it feels in this box, that was a great punt into the wind. It's blowing like a hurricane up here in the box. Jacob Wetzel fair caught the ball about the 34-yard line. Walkersville starts their third drive of the game. I'm actually sorry we took that window out now. (laughs) We might have to put our coats and gloves on before this game's over. (laughs) All right, Lions ball. Billy Gant brings the play in from the sidelines. Got the ball. Mark, we're down to 13 seconds on the play clock. All right. Got to hurry up and get them out and get them going. Directing a little traffic. Gantz down in her center. Got three seconds. He gets it away. Hands off to the deep back. Off left tackle. He hurdles. Jumps over to the man. Drags the tackler ahead. Gain of about four on the carry. Number one, Ty Littleton again on the ISO left. Jumped over top the initial line of scrimmage. Gain of four on the play. Second and six for Walkersville. I apologize if I don't get a whole lot of the Middletown numbers. It's it's really hard to read the numbers. 2.41 to go in the first quarter. Middletown up in the box. Wants to pass. Gans got it. He stands there and waits. Hooks up. Guys caught it. Let's see if he was in bounds. Yep. They signal a reception. Oh. Now they're calling him out. Now they say it's out. So the receiver was just out of bounds on the reception, but he was wide open, Rick. Yep, a little little turnout by Josh. Uh, Hunter Cleaver running the deep pattern behind him, takes the cornerback out of the play. Kind of puts that defensive back in a position where he's going to decide who he's going to cover. Third and six for the Lions now as they wait for the play to come in. That was a late call there on the uh, far sidelines. It was. We're arguing about it, but it's like, one foot in in high school football. Well, it was right in front of Coach Paula, so he, yeah. he he didn't jump up and down and fall over the place, so it must have been a good call. Here we go. Wants to pass again. Gant looking to his right. Oh, and the pocket collapses all over Gant, and he gets a sack. 44, oh. Kyle Plink from his defensive end position over overpowered the running back. Knocked Billy Gant down for a loss. Just bull rushed that whole pile right into him, and now the punting unit is out on the field with fourth and nine for the Lions. 
two receivers back deep to receive with the wind at their back. There's a snap. Good snap. He gets a beautiful spiraling kick away. Again. Over the head. He makes a great backwards catch at the 18 out to the 20, 25, 30, 30, 40. Sidestepping all the way. He's got one man to beat. There's a flag. Why? And he's all the way down to the 25-yard line on an incredible turn. But we got yellow hankies all over the field, and something's going to come out of this. Boy, I thought I saw the block. I don't think it was a bad block. But it looks Personal like they foul put a flag on it. Against Middletown is the and call. And that's going to bring it all the way back here, on back into Middletown territory. Yeah, First Middletown. Off, Zach Dominic, great catch of that punt. That thing yes. looked like it was going over his head. Got it about the 20-yard line, maybe inside the 20, up the sidelines, a couple good blocks. And then yeah. I guess the referee spotted one they didn't like about the 48-yard line, yep. dropping it back. So they're going to tack off. Middletown back to the 33-yard line. Yeah. They'll be first and 10. 15 yards on the uh, block in the back there. And, you know, the interesting part about that was he just – he had a great – I mean, he just ran on a rope right up that sideline. Yeah. and What a yeah. catch. What so a that, catch. That penalty took about 35 yards away yep. off of that 35 return. net. Pistol backfield, hand off to the lone back, runs around the left side, gets outside of the edge, but then he's caught from behind and dragged down. Only about a yard or two gain on that one. Around the left edge, number 34 for Middletown. Ball's on the 34-yard line now. We'll call it second and nine, only yard gain on the carry. Oh, that's Isaiah. Um, Here we go. Middletown breaks the huddle, coming out to the line of scrimmage. Five receivers in the formation. No, make it three. Pistol, handoff to the lone back, off right tackle, and he doesn't get much at all. That, that was a great effort just to get back to the line of scrimmage by yes. Isaiah. Well, Walkersville's getting a lot of penetration across that line that, into, into the Middletown backfield. Right, that front four really puts some pressure on you. Get in the backfield, and then the linebackers there, Ty Gleason, Christian Policelli, there to clean things up. So we got 38 at the 35-yard line for Middletown. Here we go. We've got four receivers stacked to the wide side of the field. One to the near, empty backfield, straight drop. Poffenbarger, quick out, hits the man, and immediately tackled and dropped after a three-yard gain. Short out, pass completed to Isaac Summers. Number seven, Baruti, Isaiah Baruti on the stop for Walkersville. That's the end of the first quarter with the Walkersville Lions leading 7 to nothing here over the Middletown Knights. Middletown has the ball, uh, fourth and four, and we'll be right back after this commercial break as they change into the field. Med One Pharmacy is the largest locally owned pharmacy in County. Med One Pharmacy has four locations in Brunswick, Emmitsburg, Middletown, and Thurmont to provide you with convenience, experience, service, tradition, and value. Med One Pharmacy. Check out their website at medonepharmacy.com. That's M E D O N E pharmacy.com today. Or for more information, call them at 301 271 2223. Med One Pharmacy is a proud sponsor of Frederick County Public School Athletics. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at Middletown High School where the Middletown Knights have the ball. Punting unit is out on the field. They will be punting left to right now on your radio dial. That's west to east. Dillard set the to wind pen. They're back. Oh, oh the snap is snap. way over his head. He has to run back and get it. He pulls it down, gets the ball away. It's a flat line drive. Takes a great Middletown hop and rolls all the way down. Still rolling 30, 25. The wind is blowing the ball all the way down. Wow. For a busted play, that was a heck of a punt. All things considered, a 38-yard punt. That's a pretty good job there by Dillard. Yeah. The ball went clearly over his over head. His he didn't head. have a chance. Took a nice bounce that came right up to him. He scooped it up like a shortstop, turned around, 
got his composure. Nice punt. And he had three guys bearing down on him with that composure, too. So Walkersville will take over on their own 23-yard line, first and 10, to start out this second quarter with a 7 to nothing lead for the Lions. See if there's any adjustments made by either team here between quarters. Gant brings them out of the huddle eye formation. One receiver split wide. Hand off to the deep back off right tackle. Got a seam in the secondary. One man to meet. He'll go all the way. Jacob Wetzel got the seam and outran everybody. Touchdown, Walkersville. 73-yard run by Jacob Wetzel all the way down to score. Great blocking, great blocking. He was untouched. Iso right up through there. Christian Palacelli lead block. Knocked off the linebacker, and there was nobody left. Safeties rolled up to the corner. By the time they saw what was happening, Jake Wetzel was on his way to the end zone. And he outran two backs who were trying to catch him and just couldn't catch him. There was a a foot race for 70 yards. Here's the PAT now. There's a snap to set. The kick is up, and the kick is good. As the Lions tack another one on the board. Stadium. Yeah, Middle, Middletown's rolling up on that run stop defense, and if you break the line of scrimmage, especially with someone as speedy as Jacob Wetzel, it could be trouble. And there it was. Yes. Well, a difficult turn of events for the Middletown Knights down 14 to nothing, but uh, there's a long way to go here tonight. Right. 11 and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. Middletown will have the wind at their back this entire quarter, so the passing game. Might benefit from that. It looks like Walkersville has dialed into the Middletown run game. And it's kind of the, the converse of, of styles. Middletown's trying to stop the Walkersville run. Walkersville trying to stop the Middletown pass. There's a flat line drive kick taken at the 10-yard line out to the 15, 20, 25, 30. Breaks in through 35 and all the way out to the 38-yard line. Great return. Zach Dominic, a dangerous returner for Middletown, broke the initial wave of Middletown. I mean, Walkersville on, on the return all the way up to the 38-yard line. Middletown starts their next drive. I was checking the stats, Michael, and Dominic, he has an awesome kick return average. Does he? One of the best in the county. Dangerous, dangerous return man. Four receivers split wide, one to the near, empty backfield, one motion across, straight drop. Poffenbarger with a quick out, and he's immediately hit and dropped down, but it's like a run play for three yards. Yep, their short pass possession game. Number five, Mark Avage, stopped by number three, Aaron Yonke for Walkersville. The old, West Coast, the old West Coast dink and dunk, huh? Yep, give him about three on that. Be second and seven at the 41 yard line. Middletown breaks the huddle out to the line of scrimmage now. Poffenbarger, same formation for Poffenbarger. Three man front for the Lions. They come. Got a man on a quick out. Great catch. Spins and breaks the tackle and gets first down yards all the way down to the 50 yard line. And that'll move the chains. Number four, Hunter Cleveland out of the out of his secondary position. I'm sorry, check that. Hunter Cleaver on the stop for Walkersville. First down, Middletown. Nose just almost touching midfield. I, I was an interesting pattern. There were two receivers standing side by side on that. Somebody broke the pattern, obviously. A little, a little tight together if, if you're the quarterback. You don't like to see that. Three receivers split wide, pistol backfield. Motion across the formation, left to right. Straight drop, wants to pass. Got some pressure, scrambles up in the pocket. Cut, ankle tackle, and brings him down for a one-yard loss. Jeremiah Sweet from his defensive end position. Then Ethan Parrish cleaned it up. Loss of four on the play. Three or four, yeah. I said one yard, but boy. Yeah. We're second and 14, back at the 46-yard line of Middletown. They shuttle the play into the huddle, break the line of scrimmage out to the ball now. 
So it looks like Walkersville sticking with their three they man those, front. Yep. They got four receivers all bunched up to the near side of the narrow side of the field. They send one in motion. Straight drop. Rolls to his right now. Got some pressure. Scrambles Ooh. right into the pressure and gets sacked again. Again, number nine, Jeremiah Sweet from his defensive end position. Forced Poffenberger up into the pocket, and there, Tyler Gleason, number six from his linebacker spot, was there to clean it up. He's got to roll out on those. He's got lots of green if he rolls out, but he keeps stepping up into the pocket. It's collapsing in his face. Well, keep an eye on uh, defensive ends here. Looks like they're trying to keep a little more outside leverage this drive than they did the previous drive uh -huh. where he did get I, outside. I see what you mean. Yeah. Kind of taking it away, taking that roll away from him. Straight drop, wants to pass, third and a mile. Down in the middle, and a ball falls incomplete. Christian Policelli dives, diving interception attempt, tipped that, knocked it down. Fourth and 20 for Middletown. So Middletown will have to punt it away to the Lions. We'll see how the wind aids this punt like it did Christian's when, Middle, when Walkersville was punting in the first quarter. 8.48 to go in the half. 14 to nothing, Walkersville. Standing on his own 25. He gets a good snap this time. little pressure there, but he gets the ball away. High punt takes a good Great Walkersville bounce. bounce, and it'll be down right at the 18-yard line. It'll be Walkersville ball first and 10 on the 18. Nice punt. Hit about the 15-yard line and took a backward bounce. So Walkersville starts at the 18-yard line. Had a little pressure that time from number one Ty Littleton from his right defensive end spot, but no problem. Nice punt. All the punts have been really nice tonight. Yeah. That wind must be really ripping down on that field because I know when we get to halftime, we're going to put our window back in here. <laughs> oh, it feels like football, Michael. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, I'm not <laughs> dressed for football, so I have to go out and get my jacket out of the van. Here we go. Lions up to the line of scrimmage. Eye formation behind Gant. Hand off to the deep back. Caught in the backfield and dropped for a one-yard, two-yard loss. A whole scrum of black jerseys knocking backwards. Well played by Middletown. Jacob Wetzel, ISO right. Not, nothing there. No gain. Second and ten, Walkersville. Forward progress got him back to the line of scrimmage. So, they, they are, Middletown is committed to stopping the run. And if Walkersville breaks the line of scrimmage, it, it could be Katie bar the door again. Gant wants to pass. Got a man out in the flat. Caught it. Steps out of bounds. And it's right just past the marker. Great play by that receiver. Good route running. Actually, the angle is deceiving us a little bit. Looks like we're all the way up to the 29-yard line. 29-yard line of Walkersville. First down. He was just about a yard past that marker, right yep. where he needed yep. to be. Yep. It makes you crazy ball. when you see a receiver run a pattern and come up short. Right. Again, first. Billy Gant finding his number one receiver, Josh Poles, consistently tonight. Gant under center. Straight ahead. Gant on the keeper. Gets a couple. Now, we've watched Walkersville play a few games this year. Now, I think Billy, if he sees something that he likes, he just takes that stick to go. Yeah. It's, it's not a can call he audible, play. Can he audible on that? Check I, off on I'm not that? even sure he checks off. I think he just decides he's just, taking it. Yeah. Offensive line blocks stay the same as they were on the, the they, called play. They and start he just cheating goes. out of the A gap into the B gap, That's and he right. sees that. Yep. And he's a really good athlete, so. All right, trips right, pitch back. They run behind the trips around the right side, sticks his nose in there and drills ahead for a gain of about five on the carry. Looks like we're going to be about a yard shy or they're going to bring the sticks in. Off tackle, power pitch to the right. Again, Middletown kind of selling out to stop the, the B and C gap. So there we go around the outside. It's it's nice game. Shorter than a yard. It, it's going oh. to be third and really short. I think they're taking a look. They're going to bring it in and measure now. They're calling in the chains. Now, the ball is spotted on, uh, let's call it the 39-yard line. He had to get just past that 
to the 39 and a half to get the first down yardage as they bring the chains out to make the measurement. I think we're I think it's just shy. Yep. Yeah. So they're making the signal now. They're they're showing inches with their fingers. So less than the length of a football. So we got third and about a foot. The sewer Walkersville just gap blocks, wedge blocks, and pushes forward. Uses their strength. Hey. Can put him back over the nose. All bunched in tight. Gant pointing to the defense now. Leans down under center. Hand off to the deep back straight ahead. Caught in the backfield. Breaks a tackle. Grabs a leg and then he leans ahead and gets the first down. Boy, that was all second and third effort. Jacob Wetzel, I mean, he is notorious for making that first man miss. And there, if 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 he goes down, Walkersville does not get the first down, but he made first man miss, then picked up about two yards. First and ten now, ball on the 43-yard line. Pitched the deep back around the right end, got some running room, runs through the crowd and just drills it straight ahead. Just solid power running for eight yards. Walkersville's come out double tight wing, and they just power toss to the wing side, and it's just man-on-man -man blocking, fullback leading in front of the tailback, and it's it's muscle on muscle. Who's going to win? Walkersville won that battle. Eight, eight yards on that run, second and two just across into Middletown territory. You see the Middletown linemen have got their hands on their hips now, looking like they're on their heels a bit. Yep. Walkersville will wear you down. They just stick with this game plan. They're going to run the football. Here they come straight ahead. Right through the line of scrimmage. Turns, drives, builds, pushes the whole scrum, and he gets about three on the carry and moves the chains again. Yep. Iso left. Christian Palacelli leading Jacob Wetzel makes the first man miss. Gain of five on the play. Roland Hockenberry for Middletown makes the stop. After a gain of five, first down Walkersville. Now down into Middletown territory at the 44-yard line. Wing goes into motion. Hand off to the deep back straight ahead. Caught and tripped in the backfield, but he hurdles the trip and falls ahead for about a yard gain. Again, from the tailback position, Ty Littleton, ISO left that time. Hockenberry on the stop for Middletown, gain of two on the play. Good penetration by the right defensive tackle there into the backfield to trip up Littleton so he didn't get any momentum going there. Second and nine, same formation for the Lions. Pitch toss on the right side, power again. Into the secondary, breaks the tackle, sticks his nose down there, pushes past the first down marker. And then a whole big, huge pile of black jerseys pushing back. But he had the forward momentum to move the chains once yep. again. Again, power toss to the right. Jacob Wetzel around the right side, cuts back in. There's so a player down. player down on his hands and knees in the middle of the field. Number two, Josh Poles works his way up. Looks like he's limping a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's on got that a little hitch leg. in his get along there. But again, Jacob Wetzel, power toss to the right, reads the block in, cuts inside, another first down for Walkersville. Now they're at the Middletown 31. Walkersville leading 14 to nothing, starting to chew on this clock a bit here as we get a little say, further I don't in there. Think we call it a timeout, so. Timeout on the field? No, no, no timeout. Middletown no. just ran over real quick while Josh was working his way off the field. All right. Ball's ready for play, and here we go. Lions out to the line of scrimmage now. Wing left eye formation behind Gant. Long count for Gant. Straight ahead, Gant goes with the keeper. Got about two on that. Yep, Billy Gant sees something he likes off the left side. Gain of a long two, short three as the offensive line wedges ahead. Ball spotted on the 28-yard line now in Middletown territory as the Knights keep moving those chains and yep. powering that ball down the field. Walkersville milk, milking the clock, letting it run, no hurry. This time, offset formation in the backfield. Handoff to the back, fullback. He bounces it outside on his feet around the end, and he runs all the way to the secondary, him 15 yards on the carry. That's an old play that Coach Poles 
pulled out of the playbook. It's belly right. It's an old wing T play where the actually the running back, tailback, leads the fullback off tackle. Then the, the fullback reads what he wants. And there, Christian, with enough speed to bounce outside and get down the sidelines, first down Walkersville at the 12-yard line. Ball's on the 12, as Coach Rick Little said, and we're... We have a fresh set of downs now. They can still make a first and not score. But they're content just to run this ball right at Middletown now. Pitch toss left now. They're running on the left side. Drills it in there. Still churning, driving, trying to get down. And he leans ahead and falls into the end zone for a touchdown. Unbelievable. We'll talk about second effort. He looked like he was stopped at the three-yard line. And he just stuck that ball out and drove the whole pile forward into the end zone. Ty Littleton would not stop and then with a little bit of help from his friends just pushed the whole pile into the end zone before he fell down. 12-yard touchdown run by Ty Littleton. Impressive drive by the Lions there. There's the snap, the set. The kick is up and the kick is good. The Lions have jumped out in this first half here at Middletown, and the crowd is pretty quiet right now as Middletown is trying to get, figure out a way to stop that just that strong running game, that power by running the line of Walkersville, which has been the staple since Coach Polis has taken over, and especially with this core group of players and athletes. They've run the football like this consistently for the last three years. Now, last week against Oakdale, Walkersville had a little trouble there. What did Oakdale do to stop the run that Middletown is not doing? Well, I think Oakdale just might have been a little stronger up front. And they had a really good game plan of they were too penetrating off the line of scrimmage. And then linebackers were there to clean things up. Winds died down a bit here. The Streamers are not moving so much more anymore on their goalposts as they tee the ball up and they kick it. Line drive kick taken at the 10, out to the 15, 20, 25, bounces it out to his right. Got one man stiff arms, gets around the edge, nice. 30, and he's driven out of bounds at the 33. So once again, is that Do- is that, that uh, Dominic guy? Dominic, yeah. Dominic? Wow, he's a good return good, man. Good return man. Broke a couple tackles, bounced to the outside. Stiff arm. Uh, stiff arm all the way up to the 35, 34-yard line where Middletown starts this drive. This is this, this is, is a big drive the for The old Middletown. cliche, yeah. this is a big drive. Big drive for they the Knights right here. points on the board here. They need to move those chains. Get back chains into the game, get a little momentum. Yeah. Now, am, they haven't, have they run the ball at all yet? Yeah, they ran a, few a couple times. of times. A few times, yeah. Yep. Here we go. Their controlled passing game. Pistol formation, three receivers out. High snap, he pulls it down, pitches it to the outside, trying to get around the edge, and he's caught. Wow, that outside linebacker played that perfectly, played right off the block and made the tackle for no gain. Hunter Cleveland holds his holds his ground on the outside. I'm sorry, I keep saying Cleveland. This Hunter Cleaver. Yeah. Cleaver, number four on the outside. Actually, he's the cornerback for Walkersville. Just maintains think, just think his Beaver outside Cleaver. Control. There we go. <laughs> I apologize in advance if I get it wrong again. <laughs> to the Cleaver family. But it's number four, Hunter. <laughs> Here we go. Playing a well of a game so far defensively for Second and ten for the Knights. Shotgun, straight drop. Poffenbarger looking deep. Got a man. Fires it. Oh, off his fingertips. He had him in the zone, and he was right hooked up in the middle of that zone. But it had too much mustard on it and went right yeah. through his fingers. The receiver from Middletown made a nice adjustment, just a little too high for him to bring it down. Third and long for the Knights. We'll see. They need, they need to try to move these sticks. They don't want to give the ball back. Three minutes and six seconds left in the second. Three oh six left. Okay. Yeah. Straight drop. Wants to pass. Looking to his right. Pulls it down. Scrambles. Got a little bit of room. Not much there. He gets around the oh, edge. Good outside. Run. Good run. Depends but on I, the spot where he stepped no, out. He did. He's Four two yards yard short. Line. He's two yards shy. Yep. He's two good yards scramble. Short. Good scramble by Poffenberger, but just not enough room to run on the short side there in front of the Walkerville bench. Stepped out of bounds at the 40-yard line, stops the clock with 2 minutes 58 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Walkerville gets the ball back again. 
So the punting unit's out for the Knights now. He'll stand the punters right on the 25-yard line. But the wind has died down now, so that'll help the snap, but not the kick. There, he gets a good, high, spiraling kick. Taking it to 15. Breaks a tackle. Drops the ball. It's on the ground. He picks it up. It bounces right into his arm, and then he's smacked in the face and knocked backwards by about three black jerseys. That was uh, almost 10. a disaster. Yeah, number 10, Brett Ahol, filling in for Josh Polis on the return there. Caught the ball cleanly, then took off, and it popped out of his hands. But he got the good bounce. bounce. It bounced right yep. back into his, and his uh, he, he's red the basket. baseball player. He scooped that up cleanly, maintained control. Ball spotted on the 14-yard line now, first and 10 for the Lions. This is their uh, worst possession of the game. They're pinned all the way back. Their back's against the end zone now. We'll see if Coach Polis just is satisfied with 21 or open this up with all of his timeouts left. 245, plenty of time if they move the chains consistently. Pitch. Pitch toss around the left side. Got some penetration by the Knights. Caught in the backfield and dragged down. Not much there. He might have got a couple on that one. Yep. Toss left. Number 44, Kyle Klink played that very well. Grabbed on to Jacob. Would not let go. Jacob drug him around a little bit for about a three-yard gain. Second and seven for, for Walkersville. Looks like the ball's on the 17-yard line now in Lions territory. Yep. Clock continues Clock running. Run. Two minutes, ten seconds. Coach Poles sees the play clock clicking down, calls the timeout. There's the timeout. Lions call timeout. That'll give us a chance to step aside for a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to AM 1450. And this is your source for the best high school sports in the region. We're all busy with plenty of commitments. That's why Anytime Fitness is the perfect way to stay in shape. From either home or work, Anytime Fitness of Thurmont is always close by, and they're open 24-7. They can tailor a personalized training program to fit your workout needs. Anytime Fitness can also fashion a membership and payment plan that will be flexible enough for your on-the-go lifestyle. You'll love the 24-hour co-ed fitness center with state-of-the-art equipment designed to sculpt and tone you into shape. And when you're away from the Thurmont area, your membership guarantees you access to any of the over 1,000 clubs worldwide. Visit us at 130 Frederick Road to start your program today. Now you can stay healthy. Anytime with Anytime Fitness. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at Middletown High School where the Walkersville Lions are leading 21 to nothing, and they have the ball with a couple of minutes to go in this first half. They drive it straight ahead. And they put a couple there on the ground, and it's going to come up. They'll call it third and short now for the Lions. Ty Littleton on the ISO left. Gain of nice gain of five. Second, third and three. Check that. Third and three for Walkersville at the 21-yard line. Clock continues to run. Clicking on All the way down one to 135, yeah. Here they come out the line of scrimmage, wing right, eye formation behind Gant. Hand off to the deep back off the right side. Gant fakes it, pulls it down, and runs with it around the end. He's got first down yardage as he runs out of bounds on the far side of the field. I think he just got enough. They're moving the chains, yes. Yep. yep. That was a great play fake. He yeah. did, they, they played that run, that power run fake, and then he pulled it out and ran it. But I'll tell you sprinted. what, Middletown was there. Billy just made a little dip with his shoulder to the inside, which gave him just enough room to get to the first down marker and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So they move the chains again. Yep, Billy with a minute out. 19 on the clock. Ball's on the 25-yard line in Lions territory. You think they're going to go to the air at all now? Uh, I would not just be gonna surprised be if he to... does not take a shot. Well, here they're showing run that. formation, and there's yep. a pitch toss left now. He's got a bunch of guys. He leads a tackler, puts his hand on the back of the tacklers, and straight ahead moves the whole pile, and he's got first down yardage. There's a flag behind the play, typically in the position of holding. They're all so, pointing in that direction. Yep. Holding is the official call on the field, and it's against the Lions. Yep. Jake Wetzel. Good run there. Very patient. Stayed behind the blocking and then snuck through. But the penalty will bring it back. 
take that 12-yard gain off the board. So they're going to run it all the way back. The spot of the, of the infraction is the uh, 19, no, the uh, made 24-yard line. Yep. So it's going to go all the way back to the 14, where the ball is spotted. So that's going to be first and 32. No. No? Oh, it's, it's going to be about 22. Yeah, you're right, 22. Bad math, Michael. Yeah, that's what I said. I was looking at the board when I said that. That's a little long. Yeah, a little long. Oh, there's the he's pass. He's going to pass. Oh. oh, and he's going to get sacked in the backfield. Beautiful play. You better be careful there. Number 44 is celebrating a little bit too vociferously. He smacked the quarterback when he got up. A little excited. Good for him, though. He pulled back. <laughs> yep, number 44, Kyle Klink on the uh, defensive end position. Come in again. Overpowered the fullback from Walkersville. Got to Billy. Pulled him down. Timeout, out, Middletown. Middletown, Middletown calls, calls time. Yes, that's it. So we've got uh, 40 seconds to go in the first half. The uh, Walkersville Lions leading 21 to nothing here. Middletown Knights. Why would they call timeout? They, I mean, they well, he, with uh, second and about 25, 26, he's just hoping to get the football back. He has two more timeouts. At least force Walkersville to punt the football. Try for a block. You never know. 40 it, seconds enough. Yeah, with your two timeouts, All right. they'll get to a position where we'll, where Walkersville will have to punt if they don't get a first down. Okay. I want to remind our listeners we're going to play the uh, Sheldon Steeler interview uh, talking about the Maryland point standings for the entire Frederick County uh, system here. And uh, we'll play that in its entirety for your halftime entertainment and uh, give you a better give you a better understanding, a better picture of, of how this point standing thing is going to is going to develop as we get we get some scores from around the league for you here. Some important scores, of course. The scores are coming all over from Damascus, from Oakdale, Tuscarora, Linganore, Urbana. All these teams, Brunswick and Catoctin playing. And there's the handoff to the deep back. He's got some running room in the secondary. Breaks one tackle and then runs into a, a tackler and he's brought down. But he had a good what eight nine yards on the carry. Again, Jacob Wetzel, workhorse that he is. Middletown. Calls second time out here in the first half. Yep. Trying to get in a position to force Walkersville to punt football. The breeze is coming back a bit here. I can feel it picking up a mite. We're looking out over the field here. Good crowd. It was all the seniors were introduced here tonight. Senior night at Middletown High School. Yep, last home game for these young men. Had a great career here at Middletown. Oh, yeah. It's such a great school. A good program, good sports program all the way around. Football, basketball, softball, soccer, field hockey, you name it, track. Just a great program. It's not right. Third and 16 for the Lions. All right, here we go. Walkers was out on the field, eye formation behind Gant, wing left. Hits the up back straight ahead into the secondary on his feet. Spins, turns, and runs, and he gets a first down yardage. Unbelievable. A, a 12 yard gain. So on third and 16, Coach Poles flips him up, calls a fullback trap, catches Middletown looking maybe outside. Now Walkersville's calling the timeout. <laughs> they got the first down. Now they got a little bit of yardage to work with. And that took uh, 14 seconds off the clock. We're down to 26 seconds. And uh, th this last minute of play here seems like forever. Yep. <laughs> All right, timeout on the field as both teams are huddled up out on the field. Yeah, I think Coach Polis was going to be satisfied just to punt the football there if that run play did not sneak through. But good blocking, Christian Policelli, good running. Good spin move to, to break for that for second uh, effort yardage. Yep. Now, if you're Middletown, you got to be careful. You cannot let Walkersville score a touchdown. No. You cannot let them That's score. That, that would be a backbreaker. All right, here come the Lions. Ball spotted on the 37-yard line, first and 10. So Middletown rolls their inverts back a little bit, eight yards off the ball. Gant wants to pass, fakes the handoff, rolls, got a man deep, and it's caught. All the way down. Unbelievable catch. The defender got caught, turned around, 
The receiver had to hold up a bit to make the catch, and now they're going to throw it down to stop the clock. Gant taking his time. Doesn't look like he's going to spike it. Oh, they're going to they're going to wait for the ball to be ready. Mark will play. And there they spike it. Okay, they spike the ball to stop the clock. I'll tell you what, Miles Roberts 15 seconds from to his go. tight end position made a great adjustment on that pass. He was he running did. a little down and out. The ball came over his inside shoulder. He turned all the way around, caught it with his hands, fell down well, forward. We had to come back to it down. a little bit. A little bit. And it, the, the defender was running into him, so he had to run through the defender yep. to get to the ball. Yep, great catch. Here comes the Lions. Two receivers split wide. Hand off to the up, fullback on the trap, into the secondary, still on his feet. Touchdown, Walkersville Lions. And, oh, that's the backbreaker we talked about. Yep. Wow. 25-yard touchdown. Again with that fullback. Town in a more defense. Isolated the linebacker. Christian just beat everybody to the end zone. Touchdown, Walkersville. Mm. Boy, that was great clock management by Walkersville staff Unbelievable. right there. Yes, it was. The snap, the set, the kick is up. A lot of pressure, but he gets it away, and it's good. And we've got a 28 to nothing ball game here. An impressive first half by these Walkersville, Walkersville lines. It's been all lines. Middletown unable to get anything on track here offensively. Yep. Middletown is able to complete a few passes, get a few runs, but nothing consistent enough to get them down the field and get into the end zone. So we're at 28, 28 to nothing for Walkersville with nine seconds to play in the quarter. That's why that job sucks. All right, here come the Knights out on the field. Walkersville still huddled up. Boy, if I'm I'm Walkersville, I'm I'm not kicking the ball at number two. Zach's heard us at every return so far. Oakdale we'll up what... 27 to seven over Tuscarora with five minutes to go in the half. Leonor beating Urbana 28 to seven. We're in the second corner. There's a short kick. Two hops to Middletown. He tries to run. He breaks through around the end, gets one tackle, and he's driven out down at the 40-yard line in Knights territory. Number 24 for Middletown picks up the short squib kick, returns it back to the 40-yard line where Middletown has three seconds to play here in the second quarter. Brian Walker's on the return for Middletown. End of the first, excuse me, I'm sorry, end of the first quarter of action, Katakta leading Brunswick 12 to nothing. That's a big game for Katakta. It is. They, they need, they need help, too. And a little bit of help, and they're in the playoffs. For the first time since 2012. So Middletown takes a knee, lets the quarter end, the halftime. Here we are at halftime, 28 to nothing, Walkersville. Let's see if we can find a Wooten Damascus score. That we'll, we'll try and do that. We'll, the region. we'll jump out for a quick break, and we'll run that uh, interview I talked about, and we'll look for that Wooten score while we're out. You're listening to AM 1450, and we're going to run the Sheldon Shielder uh, MarylandPrepFootball.com interview right now. Thanks for tuning in. The Walkersville Lions have taken a 28-0 lead here in the first half of this football game at Middletown High School. We'll be back after this halftime break. Sheldon is uh, the founder of the MarylandPrepFootball.com site. Sheldon, welcome to our broadcast. Oh, happy to be here. Sheldon, tell us a little bit about your, your website, Maryland Prep Football. What is it uh, all about? Um, it's really, uh, I, you know, I bounced around from a number of uh, larger media organizations, and, and, and they were kind enough to take um, my information. But eventually I decided I just needed it to be in one area. Um, so I'm not worried about any media, media um, changes. 
and it's basically a site that's kind of dedicated to the records and history for high school football in Maryland. Um, you know, it's where we keep sort of the updated records list, um, a lot of the state history in terms of the state rankings, all state teams, mm -hmm. and just uh, trying to put high school football in a little bit of a historical context. What's your background? How did you get involved in uh, specifically football? Uh, well, when I got out of, I, I was the stack keeper at my high school, and that happened to be Frederick High. Mm -hmm. We made a run to the finals, and uh, that prompted my interest in, wow, when was, when was the last time Frederick ever did this? Or when, you know, how prevalent is this in, in, in Frederick County? And it just sort of grew from there. I just, I kind of enjoyed the, um, you know, the, the land so much and as I became a professional journalist my focus has always been in the world of high school sports and you know football's football king especially in the fall and um, you know I started right away covering high school football and, and here I am 30 years later wow. still hanging around in the same uh, state and you're just not you're not just doing this in the digital online world you're also uh, one of the managers over at the Frederick Indoor Sports Center correct that, that is correct yes I am I'm the program director here in that job Kind of, uh, entails uh, a lot of hands-on um, with mostly the soccer and lacrosse communities. I'm pretty much a football soccer guy. Uh -huh. um, I've got to run the Ravens football 7-on-7 uh, seven seven tournament with Vince Ahern in the summer, and I do the high school football in the fall, and then I do soccer year-round, so that's what I do. And we're here with Sheldon Shaler, and he is uh, the founder of the MarylandPrepFootball.com site. Sheldon, have you taken a look at the 2 a West? What, what is your opinion on this? division in Maryland football. Well, we, we knew when the new classifications came out, you know, with teams like Seneca and Damascus and Oakdale moving down to a 2 way that already included the likes of Walkersville and Middletown, who, who kind of had the loss on the 2 way state title for the better part of the last half uh, decade. Mm -hmm. um, but they really shifted the focus from 3A West to 2 a West as the state's most difficult and dominating region. Clearly, the results this year have shown that because it is very likely we're going to have an eight and two team not make the playoffs. So it's very possible. I shouldn't say likely, but it's certainly possible an eight and two team it is possible. A couple of seven and three teams um, won't even be close to the playoffs in this region. Whereas, you know, by contrast, you've got other regions where you know five and five and four and five teams are still alive. Now, I know you can't speak to the, the rationale of the MPSSAA uses for doing this, but. But are they, you know, were they at all aware of what kind of a division they were creating in the 2A West when they made these alignments? It's based on enrollment, correct? It, it is based on enrollment and geography. So for starters, um, enrollment determines the classification. Geography determines the region. And while we look at that in, in a football sense and go, oh my God, all the state's powers are right here in, in 2A West, the reality of it is that it might not be true for other sports. Mm. So, okay. just with this alignment, you know, this applies to softball and, and, and baseball as well as basketball, boys and girls, and football. You know what I mean? Like, That's a great point, yes. So, so while you're looking at this just through the football lens and you're throwing your hands up in the air, you know, 2A West, in, in the eyes of some, in maybe uh, softball, for example, or something like that, might be considered a very weak region. Right. Makes sense. Good point. Excellent point. So now let's take a look specifically at tonight's game with Walkersville at Middletown and the 2A West ramifications of this game. Who's got the most at stake in this game? Well, Middletown has the most at stake because Walkersville's in win or lose. Mm -hmm. Middletown really needs to win this to get it. If they don't win this game, they need a, a fair amount of help in order to get it. You can't really count on help. <laughs> not when you're controlling your own destiny. You can't you can't rely on help. You know, we already know not only what we're in, we also pretty much are reasonably comfortable. Yeah, you know, well with the loss they could drop to number three, but you know, Walker's was now you know, obviously Walker was also riding a 23 game win streak. They certainly don't want that to disappear anytime soon. There's obviously a lot on the line, but Middletown, it, this is more of a, a playoff game for Middletown. Whereas Walkersville, you know, they could still lose and, and still move on. So am I right in saying, and, and, and just so our listeners know, in case they don't, uh, the top four teams in each of the classifications will go to the playoff seedings. That's uh, the, the 2A West and the 3A West and the 1A West in Frederick County. Uh, am I right in saying that there are six teams in out of the ten teams in Frederick County that could make the playoffs? Oh, uh, that's actually a good number. I hadn't, I hadn't looked at it that way. I mean, at this point, we know, you know Frederick and TJ are out. Yeah. Um, one, yeah. Runswick. Runswick is out. 
Aurora, Oakdale. Um, the band is out. Um, yeah, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn. So it is six. Yeah, yeah six. It, it is six. Yeah, six. Uh, six teams are still in the playoff running, and that, that kind of what makes, although we call it week 10 in the last week of the regular season, and in many ways it's the first week of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, for a number of these teams, it's win and you get to play in the playoffs, or lose and, you know, you're, you're, you're turning in your jerseys on Monday. Right. Tonight's game, is it possible that Middletown could win and still not make the playoffs? No. Uh, if they win tonight, they will outpoint Liberty. Mm -hmm. um, so Even if Liberty beats uh, Century? Correct. And, yeah, because Century's only a four-win, 2A team, mm -hmm. and, and the town's already four points clear of Liberty, and then a win tonight would be another five points clear. So they would be a whole nine, with nine points clear before you start getting into the bonus situation. Um, and there's no way for a team with seven wins to pick up nine bonus points. It's mathematically impossible. So therefore, yeah, if Middletown wins, they're in. They control their destiny. Okay. But if Middletown loses, you know, that's when they need Liberty to lose. They also probably need Williamsport to lose. And then maybe they could possibly sneak in at a seven and three in the number four spot. But, you know, I'm sure. Chances are slim. That must be, not leave it to chance. All right. So now let's look at Rockledge because it becomes a little muddier when we look at the situation between the number one and number two seeds, Damascus at number one, Rockledge at number two. If Walkersville wins and Wooten, and um, excuse me, um, Damascus defeats Wooten, where would we stand, or is that hard to tell because of the bonus points? Well, it is a little bit difficult to tell on the bonus, except for the fact that, so with Middletown, if you assume that Walkersville win over Middletown, they're going to get two eight points plus the bonus. Right. So that's going to be seven plus two eight points. So that would be 13 points that they would earn. Got it. But if the Damascus is playing for a game, of four, yeah, a, a five wins if they're a four eighteen. I'm, I'm sorry, six wins and they're a four eighteen. Mm -hmm. Right away, both teams winning tonight, Walkersville falls one more bonus point behind right away. Before we get to the bonus, they've fallen a deeper in the second, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so many teams that Walkersville that have beaten this this uh, year are expected to lose this week. In fact, four of the teams that they are playing who in theory could give them bonus points. Those four teams have combined to win three games this year. So the likelihood of those four teams giving Walkersville any bonus points to try to close that gap is a reach at that. You know, I mean, these are teams that played <laughs> 36 games and they've only won three. I doubt they're going to go three and one this week. So essentially we're looking at Walkersville solidly... Uh, in the driver's seat in the number two seat. Correct, exactly. When they're, they're yeah. you know, if you put a percentage on it, you're 95 percent unlock at number two. So ironically, then that the, the game to watch becomes the Tuscarora Oakdale game. Uh, yes, yeah, it certainly does. That one's more fluid, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, because Oakdale could finish anywhere from two, three, or four in the region, mm -hmm. and that depends on the the Tuscarora outcome. Because they, if they lose to Tuscarora, you know, then Tuscarora is possibly in the playoffs in 3A, and Oakdale is still in the playoffs in 2A, but the positioning will change, and that might uh, allow for, uh, you know, if you're looking at it from the Frederick County point of view, to avoid a Frederick County first round matchup. You know, you might be able to get Oakdale at, at, uh, at Damascus or some, some combination where you don't have, you don't have to have a Walkersville Oakdale first round game. But there's no way Oakdale could fall out of the playoffs. No, no, there ain't. Okay. Uh, so that means that uh, essentially we have three teams. Out of those six we mentioned, we have three teams, Walkersville, Lingen, and Oakdale, that have a solid lock on the playoffs, and three that are looking for help. Well, that's yeah. true. Good point. M Middletown certainly controls their destiny here tonight. Yeah, and even Tuscarora does as well, because if Tuscarora can pick up an eight bonus point game uh, win over Oakdale, you know, they're, they're sitting at a very strong five and five relative to the other teams in, in, the, uh, in that 3A West right now. Mm. 
Excellent. Well, Sheldon, this has been very informative. I really do appreciate your time. And I uh, want to ask everybody, invite everybody to check out his website, MarylandPrepFootball.com. And, uh, you know, be sure and, and watch for the standings in that as we move through the playoffs and we get to the, this is the final week. We'll have a lot better understanding of that. Sheldon, uh, are you going to be attending any of the games this weekend? Uh, my plan is to be at the Walkersville Middletown game tonight. Excellent. Stop by the booth and say hi if you get a chance. Sheldon, thanks again on behalf of the entire AM1450 team. We really appreciate your uh, insight into this uh, complicated mess that we have with the playoffs. Now, happy to help, and thanks for having me. All right, that was Sheldon Shaler, the program director at the Frederick Indoor Sports Center and founder of MarylandPrepFootball.com, giving us his experience, valued input into the complex Frederick County playoff race here in football. He really uh, summed it all up well when he said that uh, tonight is really the first round of the playoffs for all of these teams. So thank you so much once again. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Milltown High School, where the Knights are enjoy <laughs> down by 28 nothing. Uh, Walker's goal with a 28 nothing lead. Uh, Coach Rick Little, you got some stats there from the first half. Uh, the best I can do on the uh, the total yards, Walkersville's over 300 yards total offense. They've held Milltown under 100. West with a couple big runs. Uh, 161 yards on 10 carries. Policelli. He broke up with Nick, but fast game. First down. The so game is working, but it's just not getting them enough consistent first down. All right, well, a very impressive first half. Right, by the Sportsman's for Ryan as we go. Get ready for the opening kickoff here of the second half. Both teams are out in the field now. Referees are standing at midfield and just waiting for ready. the uh, yeah. mandatory three minute warm-up time to run off we're down to two minutes mm -hmm. so we got a little time to go and i'm looking at the out of town scoreboard michael it looks like no surprises uh everything here in the 2a west is going kind of corner according to script right ask us winning big oakdale's winning big leon orders winning well, uh even the doctor the flip side, Liberty is winning their game. So, essentially, if, if Middletown doesn't pull off this miraculous comeback, they'll be done their season yeah. tonight. Yeah, it's too bad. With a seven and three record. Too bad. We've got six. As I mentioned uh, in the pregame, we've got six teams in Frederick County that in the mix. If they hold on to win and get a little out of town help to bring them up to the fourth spot. Yeah. yeah, I read something that even with the right combination, they could jump as high as third in their region. Yeah. It, with the right losses. I tried to get a score from uh, the Northern Southern Garrett uh, game up there. It's, it's being played in Accident, Maryland. Which is right at which, you know, I'm a skier, so I know exactly where it is. You got to go right through the middle of accident to get to uh, out to the ski resort there at uh, Blue, at uh, Deep Creek Lake. Well, we'll see if the ski wisp. Middletown gets his, receives kickoff here, starts third quarter. And again, the old cliche, they need to bring it down here, get a little momentum, get some first downs. Get that ball across the end zone. Get back in the football game. All right, the lines will tee the ball up on the left side of the field, kicking left to right on your radio dial. With uh, Middletown receiving two receivers back deep on their own five-yard line. And we're ready for this one. Here we go. There's 
the run up, the kick, nice high end over end kick. Oh, Taking nice. it to the two yard line, five, 10, out to 15, 20. Ooh. Whoa! And he's horse collar. Actually, that was a close line, wasn't it? A lot of close line right at the 20 yard line. Dangerous returner, Zach Dominic for Middletown. Got the ball at the two yard line up to the 18. Alonzo hit him high and knocked him down. Yeah, the spot, it looks like it's right on the 19, so it'll be first and 10 for the Knights on their own 19. They break the huddle out the line of scrimmage. Four receivers split wide, pistol formation. Little discussion between one of the receivers and quarterback Poffenbarger, and now we're set. A little different. Quick out on the screen, he drops the ball. Walkersville wisely covers it, but uh, it was a forward pass and not a lateral, so... Yeah, that one is blown dead. Came out, double slot. Poppenberger, quick toss to the inside man here on the near side. Just could not hold on to the ball. Second and ten, middle ten. And right through his fingertips. And he was the one having the discussion with Poppenberger. So I guess the question was, you're going to throw it to me? And the answer is, yeah. Be ready, and here it comes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Straight drop, looking to his right this time. Got a man on a slant right across the middle. Give him about five yards on the catch. It was tough yardage, too, because he got hit hard. Ethan Joseph on the catch. Christian Policelli there to knock him right down to the turf. Game, of se game seven on the play. Yeah, he got a good mark. He got seven yards on I call it third and three now. A very makeable third and three, as you said, for Middletown. Ball spotted on the 26-yard uh, line now. They come out. Again, in that spread formation, straight drop. Looking to his left now. Got a man on the slant, hooked up, first down, and right in to the seam there as he gets a 10-yard reception on that one. And that brings the ball out to the 37-yard line with a new set of down. Yeah. Mark Evich on the quick slant. Hoffenberger hit him with the numbers. First down, middle town. Drive continues at the 37-yard line. That's what, just what the doctor ordered. Middletown is not going to three and out. So Middletown making adjustments to the half coming out and just hitting those slants real quick. High snap, he brings it down, rolls to his right. He throws that one away because he knows he didn't have a chance. He had pressure coming in on him, and it was a high snap that he couldn't corral. Yeah, both defensive ends from Walkersville, Jeremiah Sweet and Alonzo Hose were bearing down on him. He just pitched that out of bounds. Second and ten, Middletown. Play shoveled into the huddle now as they break the huddle. The Knights come out the line of scrimmage. You see Josh Polis is back on the football field with a little bit of ankle tape. Looking right. Oh, Ball's batted, batted down, down by one of the defensive linemen. Good play by Walkersville. Walkersville's Alonzo Hose again, defensive end, got his hands up and stuffed that one right back in Poppenberger's face. Third and ten, Middletown. It's like Walkersville's coming down. As long as Middletown has a man in the backfield, they roll up to a four-man four front, which gives them a little better rush off the edge. Yeah, and they're getting and they're a push getting the into that backfield yep. from that defensive front. And those two big guys over the guards are getting middle penetration also. Straight drop, pocket breaks down, he scrambles, comes out of it, throws a quick little dump, and it's no good. A little too far over the outstretched fingertips of the receiver. Yep, Poppenberger tried to make something happen that time, scrambled, tried to flip it out there, just a little too high, incomplete, fourth and ten, Middletown. So the punting unit will come on the field as the drive stalls for the Knights, and they'll punt it away. Two receivers back deep for the Lions, standing on their own 35-yard line, ready to receive this punt. Win not much of a factor now, seems to have died down a bit. Matthew Dillon. Good snap. Punt. Gets a nice yeah. high spiraling kick away. Fair catch called. Ooh, and taking the balls out. It's on the ground. Middletown got it. Now there was some question about interference. Shove the guy right into him. Yep. But I don't see any hankies, so no it's flags. a clean catch. Yep. It Jake, looked like Jacob it, Wetzel. Yeah, there was a little interference down there. We, it was hard to tell who it yep. was. Yep. I think the uh, Middletown Knight pushed the uh, blocker back towards Jacobs, kind of right. gotten away, muffed the punt. Middletown takes advantage. Huge First break down. for the Knights. They need to capitalize right here. They throw a quick one in the dirt for an incomplete pass. That one batted down by number nine, Jeremiah Sweet, the other defensive end for Walkersville. Again, Middletown doing the short passing game, trying to just 
get a few yards at a time, keep so keep the chains on schedule. As far Coach as Green obviously telling his defensive front to get your hands up uh, right. in this second half, something we didn't see in the first half. You're right, Michael. We didn't see any batted passes in the first half. Three receivers split wide. One lone back, straight drop, wants to pass. Fires it over the middle off the fingertips of the receiver, but he was triple covered. Incomplete. Intended for Zach Tomalik, a little behind him, tipped it up in the air, and falls to the ground. Third and ten, Middletown. He had the time. I'm surprised he's not going deep because he had a receiver running a streak there, a post pattern, who looked like he had some separation. I th again, they're, I think they're playing that short passing game and going long is not an option so far. Oh, high snap, he gets it down, pulls it down and wants to run with it. He throws a side armor, got a man, oh, bat it down. Wow. Beautiful close by the safety for the Lions because that guy was wide open. Jacob Wetzel from his free safety spot rolled over there, basically outran, outran the football, tipped that away, brings up fourth down. When, when uh, Poffenbarger released that sidearm, it looked like the receiver was wide open. Yeah, and that was a great play by Poffenberger just to get the ball off under the pressure, kind of on the move. There we go. There. So the punting unit out on the field now. The they're, they're hoping to be able to pin the Lions deep in their own territory here. The punter right on the 50 gives it a nice pooch kick. And it takes a hop at the 10. Bounces and rolls back. down right on the 10. Dead. Bounces they back down into a middle town cover man at the 13, 14 yard line. Actually, 15 yard line. Oh, yeah. Look at the wrong line. Long marker. Okay. Yeah. The ball did roll, but it's where the first touch from Middletown was that downs the football. All right. So the ball spotted on the 15 yard line, first and 10 for the Lions. So Walkersville is escapes from that bump punt there. We gets the ball back with no damage on yep. the scoreboard. Not able to capitalize on the turnover. A lot of shifting going on for the Knights as they move around. Gant wants to pass, got some hands face, and a leaping defensive end lands right on top of Gant, and he gets up slowly. From his defensive like, end. Yeah. Kyle Quink from his defensive end is spot again in there knocking down Billy Gant. Clink had a heck of a game here so far. He's, his numbers got called a lot this game. Yeah, Walkersville's back. He needs to step up and make some contact. They're waiting on him, and he's pushing through. Well, Clink went up in the air to bat the pass down, and his forward momentum carried him right on top of Gant. He crushed him. Yep. And Gant's slow getting up, but he's all right. He shakes it off. He brings his team out. <coughs> Timeout, Walker. Timeout on the field. That'll give us a chance to step aside for a commercial break. As we're here in the third quarter of action at, at uh, Middletown High School where the Walkersville Lions are leading 28 to nothing over the Middletown Knights. We'll be right back after this important message from the MPSSAA. Okay, here are five important reasons why your son or daughter should play a high school sport. Number one. High school sports teach valuable life lessons like self-discipline, sportsmanship, and time management skills. Two. Teens who play a high school sport have better grade point averages and fewer disciplinary problems. Number three. High school sports help fight teen obesity and substance abuse. Here's number four. High school sports provide wholesome, constructive after-school activity, perfect for today's families. And number five. And high school sports are safer than ever before. Injury surveillance and research, better equipment, and the continuing education programs for coaches provided by state and national athletic associations have made high school sports safer than ever before. This message presented by the Maryland Public Secondary Schools Athletic Association and the Maryland State Athletic Directors Association. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Walkersville has the ball third and ten. With the ball on the 14 yard line in the Lions territory, they go straight ahead on the dive. Good tackle. Shoestring tackle brings it down. A lot of contact after the whistle out there, but uh, Mark Evich on the tackle there stops Christian Balicelli after a gain of about five. That's going to bring up fourth and four for the Lions as the punting unit comes onto the field. And they'll be punting with their back against the end zone. Middletown should come out of this with 
pretty good field position. There's the snap, good snap. Line drive kick taken right at the 40. They faked, oh, they go with the reverse, and he brings it around. No, he faked the reverse, kept it. And he gets nailed, and there's a late flag comes out as the scrum brings the receiver down. Looks like we're gonna have a personal foul in there. Let's see what the call is. Referees are conferring at midfield. Side judge and the official. The holding is the call, it's against Middletown, so that'll drive him back. 10 yards on the infraction. From the spot of the foul, backs it up to the 30 yard line. Middletown starts her second drive here. Eight minutes, 28 seconds to play in the third quarter. Walkersville, Walkersville looking to hold that shutout. Middletown needs to get some points on the board. Three receivers out wide. Fakes a handoff, quick slant. No, we, we were off. Yeah, there's a late flag comes out there in the backfield, and the, we might have, whole, yes, interference on the defense. They call it a little pass interference there, a little early contact on the uh, quick slant. So that'll give uh, Middletown a 10 yard penalty. They'll mark that off. Oh, oh, oh. They Wait, they're waving it off. Oh, 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 oh. oh they they're waved calling it the off. ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Ah. No interference. Therefore, it doesn't. Yes, that's right. Yeah, they so got it. Now we got a flag on the sideline. Is it a warning against sideline warning? Yeah. Sideline warning. Sideline warning. Yeah. They're going to mark that? No. No, that should be no mark off. That's no, just the warning. They picked the ball up like they wanted to mark it off, and now we set it back down. So a little confusion here to start out this drive with 8.25 to go in the third. I think every game we've watched this year, Michael, there's been no sideline warnings. Four receivers split wide. Straight nine, drop nine, by Poppenbarger. Scrambles, pulls it down. Caught in the backfield, and then he trips and falls forward. Nice gain. He's going to get about seven yards on the carry. So the best offensive play in this football game is Poppenberger scramble. Reese Poppenberger scrambling there. Again, Walkersville with good penetration, step through, broke, broke a tackle, and then gained five yards on the play. Yeah, it's a, it's a long five, right. This ball's right on the nose of the ball, sitting right on the 35 in Middletown territory as they come back out with that same formation. Spread, four receivers, two to each side, a straight drop. Scrambling up the middle again, leaps over one player, pulls it down and falls ahead for first down yardage. And Poppenberger is is the whole entire defense. I mean, offense for uh, Middletown steps up, run seven yard game before uh, Elias Borudi knocks him down. Seven yard game, Middletown first down. Ball on the 43 yard line now, still in Knights territory, first and ten. As the black and orange come out to the line of scrimmage. Quick slant out over the middle and he drops it. Just a little behind him. Good, good quick contact by number three, Yankee, for Walkersville. Wasn't really a slant, it was an in route, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah a little deeper, about eight yards in. Eight yard in, yeah. It seems like Middletown has switched to their favorite formation this half is the double slot. One running back in the backfield, and then we're just trying to hit the slam before the coverage steps up. And all those balls are catchable. They should they should be making those catches. So let's hope they can correct that. Here we go. Oh, wants to pass again. He scrambles. Got a lot of pressure. Runs back into the backfield. Stops. Turns and throws it. That ball almost picked off, and there's the flag. Woo! Yellow hankies everywhere. And we have to got down. In the backfield, a Walkersville boys down, flags on the field. And it's against Walkersville. The pass interference. Interference. Walkersville. And man, I'm going to tell you, those those officials threw those yellow hankies at the, the offending player with purpose. 
It was raining yellow hankies out there. All right, so they're going to mark it off from the corner of the infraction, which was the, right on the 50-yard line, right smack on midfield. Right down by 15, Prince. Down for Walkerville's number 65, Candy Prenzer. Trainer's out. Look at He's He's like a leg. He's working on his right leg. Yeah. Hopefully we're not up to the knee, but we're so, not going to speculate. So the infraction moves the ball all the way down now into Lions territory at the 42-yard line, where Middletown will have a first and 10 on 42 uh, during this player injury timeout. That'll give us a chance to step aside for a break while we wait for them to uh, assist this player on the field. We'll be right back. You're listening to AM 1450. Here's a story for great high school football. Nowadays, we are bombarded with negative bias reporting about police. Take a break from the spin and listen to the Law Enforcement Today radio show. No in-your-face reporting. The show features the experiences and perspectives of law enforcement officers, their families, and supporters. Check out our website, lawenforcementtoday.com. And be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and other social media outlets. The Law Enforcement Today radio show, Tuesdays from 5 to 6 p.m. on AM 1450, The Source. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Middletown High School, where the uh, Walkerville Lions have a 28 to nothing lead. The Middletown has the ball now, fresh set of downs on the 42 yard line, and we are ready to go. Here we go, pistol formation. That same formation that Coach Little was talking about. Straight drop, he fakes the long ball, then he pulls it down and runs, and he gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage for maybe a yard at most. As you said, good pressure, he steps up through. Walkerville's number 60, Ethan Parrish, assisted by number 75, Rowan Bennett, there for no gain on the play. He, he looked like he wanted to go deep on that, but the pressure got to him. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, and, and I'll tell you, you know what, with Jacob Wetzel looking back there at the safety, you better be really sure before you cut that thing loose, because that man has speed to make up. To close, yeah. Sticking with that formation, Middletown back out of the scrimmage, straight drop, looking to his left. Got a man quick, and, in the, and the defensive hit jars the ball loose for an incomplete. And the receiver looking at the referee wants a yellow hanky, but he's not going to get it. Wow. Yep. Not Number this four, time. Hunter Cleaver on the stop there actually separated the receiver from the ball. They both arrived about the same time. So the ball falls incomplete. Third and ten, Middletown. Just the way you teach it in practice. Yep. Can't get to the ball. You can't get to the ball. Make sure you hit the hit the guy and jar it loose. Third and ten now for the Knights. Oh, and the receiver jumps on the left side, and he's he's you can tell how disgusted he is with himself, and you know it happens. Yep. Just so makes put it a little more difficult. A little five yards on there, not that big a deal. Yep. Quarterback Bob is going to have to make the play. Usually that's the guy the ball was going to. <laughs> They're so anxious to get started, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. They want to pass. Shuffles to his left a bit, lets it rip all the way down the sideline. Jump ball, no good. Too high over the tips of the defender and the receiver. Incomplete. Yeah. Again, number four, Hunter Cleaver on the play there. Well covered. Both the receiver and defender jump at the same time. Ball overthrown. Leave it to Cleaver. Fourth down to Middletown. And they're going for it. No, no, the punting unit is on now. They're, they're dropping back the punt. I don't know. Why, why don't they go for it? I mean, I'll start. Good snap. Gets a good punt away. Drills it all the way down. Hops it. 20 and out of bounds. Placed. Right about the, looks like the 18, 19 yard line is going to be marked on the 19. 19 yard line. Walkerville well, takes over with a six minutes, and 10 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Up 28 to nothing. 
to see if Walkersville can get one of these patented third quarter sustained drives, eat about six minutes off the clock. And take it into a running clock. Yep, a few points on the board. Get us out of here early. We do, like, kind of like... <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure the Middletown fans don't want to hear that, but... All right, here we go. Hand off the lone back, straight off the tackle. He leaps backwards, falls head backwards, and gets about six yards on the carry. Number one, Ty Littleton, ISO left. Right behind Christian Palacelli again, and that strong offensive line finds a little gap, as you said, breaks a tackle, spins backwards. Six yard gain on the play. Second and four ball. Ball on the 24-yard line now. Down to 10 already. Gant comes into the huddle, breaks some out, quickly to the line of scrimmage. Five seconds, four, three, two, and they get it off. Hand off to the deep back, straight ahead, not much there. Shut down at the line of attack. No gain on the play. No game, as you said, Wetzel up the middle, nothing there as the old defensive line from Middletown holds their ground, shuts off all the gaps. Well, they were a little late getting up the line of scrimmage and they had to hurry on getting that one. I think the hurry threw the timing off on the block, so uh, this one is going to be there. They're all the way down to 10 seconds already, and they're just now breaking the huddle, so they're working on that clock, I get it, but now they go to a pro set. Handoff from round tackle. He's got a, some running room, pushes one guy aside, still on his feet, and all the way down to the 35 uh, yard line. Late block downfield by Walkerville is going to cost him 15 yards. Personal foul, but the heck he comes out. It was a good run, too. It was a good run. Actually, tired Gleason. That might be his first run of the night. Bounced it outside, gained about 10. We'll see that dead ball. Personal foul against Walkersville. So it's going to be back to the 20, but it should be first and 10. First and 10 from the 20. Yes. Right. So it's a 15 yard penalty. But it's still first down. So let's see what they do with this now. They're a little bit of confusion out there. They're all communicating and now they're walking off. Third tonight, so the ball is spotted on the far hash mark at the 20 yard line and they're signaling first and 10 on the field. Yeah. The, the, clock reason, the reason it goes to first down is because the run did make the first down, but mm -hmm. then after the play.